world my name is Derek Braid we're gonna do a Meteor JS tutorial today on forms we're gonna show you how to create a form from scratch get the data from it use a collection hook kind of from the start to finish of doing forms the right way in Meteor so part of that is using a generator like iron CLI so I'm going to do iron create live forms demo and it's going to go ahead and do some work for me and you can see there it is so I'll cd into that and I'm going to run iron which will start a server and I can go into the browser and we can check what's there Okay, so we have a scaffolded Meteor app. Not much to it. What I know I want to do is change my packages. So if I go into my app and run Meteor List, it's going to say you have all sorts of packages that we don't actually want. What we really want are these ones over here. What we currently have is this. So if I open up my packages file in Meteor, that didn't work. There we go. And save that out. You'll see that right away Meteor will start up. Look for these packages. It'll download them. And then when I go back into the browser, we should have some bootstrap stuff. Okay. So first things first, Let's go in to our home page, .html. Welcome to form tutorial. And just make sure that everything is good. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do is run iron g iron g route rsvp creates a whole bunch of files for me if i do tree client you can see that i now have an rsvp directory with this information contained therein rsvp that html awesome so what I want to have instead of this is a quick form and a quick form is something that you're going to use over and over again in Meteor. Now it wants to be aware of a collection which we're going to call RSVPs. We're also going to give this an ID of insert RSVP. It is of the type method. We're going to attach a Meteor method to it and we're going to give it a name and we're going to omit a field called created at. So if you look at the autoform documentation, you'll see that this stuff is all in there. We need to give it a collection. We, our form needs an ID. We specify which type. We give it a specific Meteor method name, which we're going to later create, called submit RSVP. 
and we say omit well, fields created at. You'll notice what we don't do is actually specify any fields. So what we want to do is create a schema for our quick form. And to do that, just to remind you, I'm in my root directory here. Uh, what I want to do is create a file in my lib. And I'm going to call this RSVP schema. Open this file up. And in the interest of time, I'm going to paste in roughly about 40 lines of code to create our schema. So first things first, we're going to create a new collection called RSVPs. Got some afterhook, which I'm going to just comment out for now. And what we were going to do is we're going to ask our guests for their name or email, and we're going to automatically throw a created at field on there. We're also going to include our allow and deny rules in this file. But that's basically it. We have a schema for RSVPs. We have a quick form, which looks for this collection, RSVPs. Has an ID does not yet have a meteor method. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to go into our server methods. And we're going to say submit RSVP. Okay, and we're going to do our insert operation. Firstly, we're going to log out the RSVP, whatever that is in the console, and we're going to insert this. So our form, when we submit, refers to this method on the server and inserts it into our collection. So what happens if we go into the client? Nothing there. Why? Because that's our home page, and our home route has no knowledge of the fact that we have an RSVP template. Oops. However, if I say, hey, go look up that template and insert it, we get our form. OK, and I could submit it. and create a collection. Now I can probe that collection in our Mongo shell, and there it is. That's pretty cool. So that's the basics. Now we've used AutoForm to create, so this would be a really good commit point. We're going to soldier on, because uh, we're not done there. Now in our RSP, what we want to do is create a hook, because on the server, we have a console.log statement, but we don't have anything on the client. You'll note that when I say um, John Stark, fluidbar.com, and I submit, we don't get anything on the client side. What we do, though, get is an RSVP on the server, and if I run rcfind.pretty again, we now have two collections. Okay. How do we get it on the client? Well, what we need to do is create an on success hook. Now, since this is the kind of thing that needs to know both client and server related stuff, uh, AutoForm's smart enough to know that it 
what we put on the client it's smart enough to recognize based on the form setup and our insert action that if we write client side code so here we go into RSVP client side code and say auto form dot add hooks it takes a string which makes reference to our form insert RSVP form we're gonna pass that an object that has an on success method and we're gonna say running after hook for RSVP insert now I say and we get this console.log event well who cares right like why do I care that I can now give an on success hook because that allows us to set session variables so now I can say successful RSVP is true and when we create our template we're gonna set that value to false and we're gonna do the same thing when we destroy it so now we have a session variable that we can access inside of our template by creating a helper. And I can do a get of that session variable. So I copy that and I say oops. I say okay template if is successful RSVP is true say thanks for the RSVP else show them my quick form So a little bit of handlebars logic there. Make that bigger just so it's slightly more readable. So now when I do this, I'm going to get a little thank you note. And my form goes away. So now we've used the auto form to write this handy little hook. <coughs> you excuse me, using a session variable. So we're not done. There's one more thing we're going to do in the RSVP controller because I actually want to say thank you to that person specifically. I want to say to the last person, in this case, Derek Braid, I want to thank them. Now how do I do that? Well, what I know I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go inside of my RSPs and fetch out some information. It's not going to be a client side method. And we actually didn't use that collection hook. We won't have time for that tutorial today. I want my RSVP controller where I can subscribe. to RSVPs
and then I'm going to return a data object called RSVPs, which is equal to RSVPs dot find. To do that, I also have to publish. Apologize for these performance issues. The video is really hogging on my my machine here. It's definitely on its last legs. Meteor dot publish RSVPs. was a fail. I tried to copy and paste to save time because of all the lag. Didn't work. Okay, either way though, we're going to do meteor.publish RSVPs and then our controller is going to return this RSVPs object. It's going to make that available to our RSVPs template. My goodness, the speed is making this video unfucking bearable. I apologize. I am definitely close to a freak out because we're almost done the tutorial and I just need to do the last step. Oh, wow. You can see what I'm working with here. This is uncanny. Never had anything this, this slow and nasty. Create a new template. Let's call it last RSVP. And we're going to do an each loop. tired. I'm starting to make all sloppy mistakes. Okay. So we're going to do an each loop over our RSVPs. And we're going to say guests. And email. And Thanks for the RSVP. Just put this up here. For now. Make sure that it's getting to the client. So if we published this collection, which apparently we have not, we should get last RSVP. Last RSVP. We're publishing RSVPs. We're subscribing to it. Well, in the interest of time, we'll call the video there because we've already done significant work. If you like, I will publish the code on GitHub. And uh, you guys can find me, cashflow.ca, where I'll ask. If you have any questions about the first part of the video, which went swimmingly, that'd be great. Please like and subscribe, and I will do a part two, which shows how to show them you, uh, that user's name. Thanks for putting up with my crappy MacBook Air, which is about to go out the window. See you guys soon.